Hi, everyone. Before we start, I just just wanted to say I hope everyone is well. I mean, um, these last couple months have been pretty crazy, and um, especially these last couple of weeks, it's been um, it's been pretty tough. I mean, watching the death of uh, George Floyd was was pretty disturbing, and um, for me personally, it was uh, even more disheartening knowing it was pretty close to home for me. And um, I just want to say that my heart aches with that and um, everyone involved, and um, I'm ashamed that. Um, racism still exists to this day. So um, my eyes have been, uh, definitely been opened and um, I'm definitely committed to educating myself and making a difference out there. Okay, thanks. We'll take our first question will be Mike DeFabo from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Mike, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Jake. Uh, first of all, thanks for doing this call. I appreciate the time. Um, first of all, just can you explain what the day was like uh, when you were injured? It was kind of an interesting day to go from finding out you're an all-star for the first time in your career to then uh, obviously a gruesome injury. Can you just kind of walk us through the emotions of that day? Yeah, I mean, a lot of ups and downs that day. I mean, um, first all-star game, I mean, that's it's a pretty cool experience. I mean, um, I still remember calling my parents and they couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. But um, so pretty excited during the day. I mean, um, you worked hard to get to that moment and um, you look up to the superstars in the league. So um, pretty exciting, but um, definitely a day change of events there and um, first kind of major injury for me. So uh, just kind of looking back at it, it's uh, definitely a whirlwind kind of day, but um, hopefully I'll be come out better from it. Thanks. Uh, next question is from Seth Rohrabaugh from the Tribune Review. Seth, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Jake. Appreciate your time. Um, just, um, what is your status right now? And um, what was the collision like from your vantage point? I mean, was it frightening? Was it scary? I mean, it looked very frightening just watching it on TV or watching it from the press box. Yeah, I mean, um, I didn't really know much at the time on what happened or like um, the severity of it. But um, once you look back on it and you kind of see the video, I mean, I'm pretty lucky more things didn't happen. I mean, it's pretty. Um, could have been a lot worse. So um, just kind of a scary situation, obviously accidental, but um, yeah, it's just kind of a, a broken play and, and two guys hit skates and um, just happened to be that close to the boards and um, glad my neck got out of the way and head got out of the way. So uh, not good, but I was pretty lucky that it was just a shoulder. Do you want to also answer the status part of the question? Oh yeah, sorry. Um, just every day, day by day, I'm just um, just hanging in there. I mean, uh, I'm getting better every day, and um, just kind of um, sticking to the protocol and, and what I got to do to. Um, if we start playing, hopefully, I'll be ready by then. We'll see. Next question is from Wes Crosby of NHL.com. Wes. Hey Jake, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, just with the the state of everything over the past few months, what was it like rehabbing, um, kind of just during the pause and during this pandemic? Yeah, I mean, um, for me, I mean, I can take this as a positive for me. If, um, I got time to rehab, and and uh, for the first couple of um, months, I was able to rehab at the rink. But um, during this pandemic and and all this, I had to um, adjust to my um, apartment and house and um, it was definitely different but just being back in Pittsburgh it's nice to um, to be able to go in and and, and have a, a therapist work and, and do the little things that I couldn't do uh, if I was at my house or anything. Okay just a reminder if you have a question you can raise your hand on the cursor. We have another question from Mike DeFabo of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Mike you can unmute yourself. Sure. Uh, Jake, um, you know, obviously we know it was a shoulder injury, but I'm curious, is there any more you can share with us in terms of the extent of the injury or uh, any details on how extensive the surgery was or anything along those lines? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I'm just kind of um, obviously pretty, pretty um, interesting shoulder injury. I don't know much about the shoulder stuff. So um, first time for me to, to deal with an injury like this. So um, yeah, I was. Um, 
from what I've heard is pretty significant, but I mean, just kind of hanging in there. I mean, I've, uh, I trust in my doctors and, uh, and the therapists and the, and the wait staff guys to, um, to make sure I'll be ready to go. Okay, next question is from Will Graves from the Associated Press. Will, you can unmute yourself. Jake, uh, I'm just curious, uh, was it kind of weird? I mean, in, in a way, look, this shutdown has been, it's been not great in general, but in a way you benefited from because you're going to be able to play this year. I'm just sort of curious how you've wrestled with the emotions of knowing that, you know, the world has stopped while also reconciling the fact that, hey, this might actually, from just from a personal standpoint, this might actually be good for, for me and maybe for the team. Yeah, it's, 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 I can take the positive out of this. I mean, um, not really sure what would have happened if the um, season would have played out. So um, I can take these two to three months and, uh, and use them to my advantage. I mean, uh, if I can get rehabbed and, um, and feeling good, that'd be nice to get back playing. So um, I'm just taking it day by day, and hopefully I'm feeling better each day, and um, we'll see where it goes. Next question is from Seth Rohrbaugh from the Tribune Review. Seth, please unmute yourself. Hi, Jake. I, I know a lot of times players with a shoulder or a knee or, or, or something like that, you know, they'll have that little bit of hesitation, you know, whether they're going to the corner or try to test that part of the body. Um, I know you, you've just maybe gone on the ice just now or, or wherever it might be, but do you think you might have to fight through any of that? You know, maybe a little bit of confidence issue just to make sure the injury's completely healed? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, it's just kind of have to see. I mean, you can't really uh, can't really do that. Think about that yet. With um, I haven't really been in a situation like that since since the injury or um, or anything like that. So um, it might be there. Yeah, I don't know. It's just hard to think about right now, and um, it's hard to process if that that'll come to my mind during the game or if I'm ever thinking about it. So um, hopefully not. But I mean, we just never know what's going to happen until it happens. Okay, next question is from Jenna Harner from WPXI. Jenna, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hey, Jake, thanks so much for taking the time. Um, what is, you know, the atmosphere like among the guys right now? What are the conversations like? How much of a level of excitement is there that, you know, yes, it's phase two, but at the same time, it's phase two? Yeah, I think for us, I mean, it's just, it's nice to be back with guys and um, and see each other. I mean. Uh, it was it's so long that we've seen each other and been on the ice with each other and not knowing what's going to happen so just for free for us to be back in the rink and uh, and be able to skate with some guys it's been nice and um, obviously guys want to play hockey so uh, we're all really excited to get going next question is from Wes Crosby of NHL.com and just a reminder if you no longer have a question if we've already called on you please click on the hand signal to remove your question. Thanks. Hey, Jake. Um, speaking of phase two, uh, when or if uh, are, are you expecting to get back on the ice here as part of these um, limited group workouts? Yep, yep. I've been on the ice. Um, been on the ice for a few weeks now, so I'm just kind of hanging in there and, uh, and getting my legs back and make sure I'm feeling well. Okay, next question is from Dan Potash of AT&T Sports Network. Hi, Jake. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're well. You too. Question for you in regards to uh, a return to hockey and, and then the playoff format that's uh, been talked about. A lot of fans obviously are, are curious about the team coming back together and what uh, scenarios may look like on the ice with lines and, and so forth and so on. Uh, I think that one thing that may interest fans is the possible uh, for formulating a line that has yourself, Sidney Crosby, and Connor Sherry together, because that line at one point, not too long ago, did have some success. Have you allowed yourself to kind of revisit some moments from the past and the thought that maybe something can be re-sparked or rekindled between you guys again? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, obviously, my first year, we had a lot of fun playing together with each other, and um, it was kind of cool that Sid and the kids kind of got a um a little name going around so um yeah i've thought about it. i mean it'd be um it'd be an awesome experience again because um you know we really we really feed off each other we know each other's games so um if we have that opportunity we'll have to um hopefully get some time to to get that chemistry back and um hopefully these 
um, phase two, phase three, and in, in, in the playoffs, we can do that and um, hopefully we can make another run for it. Okay, next question is from Wes Crosby, NHL.com. Wes, go ahead. Hey, Jake, just um, looking ahead to that matchup against Montreal, um, just what challenges do you think that um, they kind of give you guys, even even being that, that 12th team in there? Yeah, we know we know they're a fast team, and um, obviously they're highly gifted and um, offensively, and have a good decor with um, what they got back there, and, and obviously an all-star goaltender. So um, we know it's going to be a battle, and um, just like every playoff round is, it's going to be an absolute um, battle. So we just got to be ready for it right off the drop and puck, and um, you know you never know what can happen in that best of five series, especially coming off um, coming off of this going right into the playoffs. So. Um, we just got to make sure we're ready for a big test. Next question is from Will Graves, the Associated Press. Hey, Jake, I'm just curious. What Do you feel that the players have a pretty good idea in terms of what the protocols are? Have they been explained to you pretty explicitly? I mean, what has been the process in terms of educating the players on what kind of needs to be done to make sure you guys proceed safely? Yeah, I mean, UPMC has done a great job for us at um, at the rink alone. I mean, um, they've kept us safe, and um, that's the only way we're going to be able to um, be able to play against if we're staying safe. So, um, I mean, the protocol we've gone over with our with our team and our um, athletic trainers, and um, it's going to take a lot. But uh, you know what? We're we're just doing all the guidelines right now and staying through the process that um, that they they've set us up with and. Um, I mean, UPMC has done great with the two rinks, and we don't see the other group or anything. So it's been um, it's been pretty cool so far. Next question is from Mike DeFabo, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Hey, Jake. Uh, my question specifically about this phase two stuff. Um, you know, since we can't be there, can you walk us through, like, what's it like? What kind of things are you specifically trying to work on? And then what are some of the major points of emphasis uh, with phase two, knowing that a phase three or formal training camp is uh, coming in about a month? Yeah, I think it's just, um, for a lot of guys, just getting back on the ice and um, and feeling comfortable out, get out there again. I mean, if it's getting your legs under you, if it's getting your hands out there. So, um, a lot, of, a lot of different things you're working on each day. If I mean, each player can be different, but um, I mean, you're, you're working in the weight room, then you're working on the ice. And um, I mean, guys have every, every different thing that they want to work on to, to make sure they're ready to go. So I think that's the biggest thing is that we're all trying to get ready um, for this, this training camp and these playoff runs. Next question from Seth Rohrbaugh from the Tribune Review. Hi, Jake. Uh, you mentioned the uh, the unrest in your state of Minnesota there uh, over the past two weeks. What do you make of the fact that so many NHL players have wanted to speak out on this? Hockey players in general are are pretty reserved when it comes to say political or social matters. Yeah, I mean it's it's nice to see that when when people have platforms are using it to um, to speak out, and um, obviously we know that it needs to end, and um, people are just learning and educating that. Um, we need to take action for it now. And um, this is, it's all been pretty tough times and um, hopefully we can, um, we can all stand together. Uh, Will, you still have your hand up. So if you have another question, you can go ahead. Um, I'll come up with one. Uh, Jake, I'm just sort of curious, you know, not when you go back to the moment of the injury, having never had suffered something really serious during your career. I mean, what was sort of the initial, I mean, the look on your face as you're coming off the ice was pretty, you know, um, I don't know. It was memorable to me. I'm just sort of curious what was running through your mind in that situation. Yeah, I wasn't really sure. I mean, um, just scores and then you, you kind of do that. You're not really sure what's thinking. You're not really sure what the severity of the injury is. So um, just try to get off the ice and, um, get back to the locker room as fast as I can because I knew something wasn't um, wasn't good. So, um, yeah, it was just I was my head was in a blur. It's just hard to go through something like that. We have a couple more questions and then a couple that were submitted via email. Next question is Dan Potash from AT&T Sportsnet. 
Jake, we've talked to a lot of players about the thought of playing when you guys get back to games uh, in buildings that are empty uh, without fans. And, and some, some may look at that as a, a disadvantage only because when the fans get pumped up, they, they pump up players and elevate their games and so forth. Have you thought about the advantages to playing in a quiet building when it comes to communication on the ice or on the bench with not only your teammates, but maybe hearing what the other team is doing that, uh, that can be seen as a plus? Yeah, I never really thought about that. You mean you can hear, you'll be able to hear a lot of different things that you never hear, you hear during games. So um, the commu communica communication level will be um, definitely different for all of us. I mean, um, if you're hearing things, I mean, you can't really hear much during, when there's fans in there. So. I mean, I think the biggest thing for us is we just got to be able to to make sure we have our own energy and our own excitement that we got to create through this um, this playoff run because we know we can do something special. Okay, Mike DeFabo, go ahead. Sorry about that. I didn't unmute myself. Uh, uh, my question has to do with, you know, obviously you guys voted and agreed upon this 2014 plan, and that was a significant step. Um, but I understand that there's still possibly going to be a couple more votes before you officially agree to come back. Uh, I guess in talking with some other teammates and other players throughout the NHL, what kind of issues or uh, roadblocks might you guys encounter? Like, what are some of the things that you still feel like need to be ironed out before uh, everyone's ready to go back and play a playoff hockey game? Yeah, I mean, I think the safety is first and foremost. We got to make sure um, that everyone's going to be safe, and um, all the the traveling people, the media, and all that. We got to make sure everything's um, it's doable, and um, the hotel situation, the rink situation. How's that going to work? And um, still think there's a lot to go into it, but um, I think the PA and the NHL are trying to work all these things out for us to get some answers. And um, I mean, it's hard for us not knowing because we're such time-based athletes that it's hard for us to not know what's going to go on and um with all this unknown for of this covid um i think um we're all kind of uh, a little on edge of what's going to happen okay we have two questions from dave molinari of dk pittsburgh sports first is do you have any lingering concerns about whether your shoulder can hold up under the rigors of playing in the nhl and what it will take for you to be confident that is as solid as that it it that it's as solid as it was before the injury. Yeah, I think I'm. I mean, I'm committed to um, to working hard and uh, and strengthening the shoulder as much as I can. So um, I'm trying to get back to as much as pre-injury as I can. I mean, you never. There's always that doubt, and you never know what's going to happen with an injury in um, in any sort of injury. So, um, but I'm committed to um, putting myself in the best possible position that I can. Okay, and the last question for today is, will it be more of a physical or mental challenge to get ready to participate in playoff intensity games after not being in any game for about seven months? Um, I think it's, it's a little bit of both. I mean, physical, um, just getting back on the ice and make sure I'm feeling good. And um, I got to jump in right into the playoffs. So I got to make sure I'm mentally ready to go. And um, just thinking about all the situations going to be in. Um, I mean, with this phase two, you can have um, I'll definitely have the time to um, hopefully be able to be ready to go and um, just kind of getting day by day getting better.